Everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a pruning demo on the figs because this is uh, not really the time that you should be pruning, um, at least where I live. But for some of you, it's becoming that time. Um, we're halfway through October here. And pretty soon, a lot of you guys are gonna get some frost that are gonna come in. Right around mid-October, a lot of the Northeast gets hit with a frost and I still don't really think even one frost is not really enough to start your pruning. However, a lot of our trees are slowing down and people are wondering and people are questioning this whole thing and trying to figure out what to do. So I figure this is a good time to show you guys. Um, and I'm just gonna do it on this tree here because I don't really care about this tree, um, what happens to it. Um, but for the rest of my trees, I'm not gonna be pruning them until they get hit with two or three frosts. Um, and usually that happens sometime around Thanksgiving um, or December 1st on average. We usually get about two or three frosts by then and our trees are fully dormant. That's the key here and that you want your tree to be fully dormant. And I made a cut on a, a recording I did before this one. I didn't like how it was coming out. But you can see on the bottom we made this cut and even up here at the top their sap flow. So the trees are still actively growing. They're not in their dormancy process. Of course they have leaves on them and that frost is gonna knock off a lot of these leaves and you might think, oh, well, they must be dormant. Um, they don't have leaves on them anymore. Well, if you make a cut and there's sap flow, the tree is not fully dormant and it's really best to wait um, until the trees are fully dormant for the, at least for the quality of the cutting but also for the health of the tree, um, in terms of the carbohydrates, right? You really want those carbohydrates that, which is the sap flow that's being stored currently in the wood. You want all that sap flow to return down to the roots um, so that when the tree wakes up the following spring, it has as much carbohydrates stored up um, that it can use to get off to a great start the following year. So if you do this too soon, it's just not ideal. I mean, you could do it now. You could take cuttings really whenever you want. You could take cuttings when the tree, maybe three months ago, when I didn't even have lignified growth. You could take green cuttings. You could try to root those. Very low success rate, however, but you could do it. And I don't really think, you know, there's some of you guys out there, by the way, who live in like Florida or live in like, you know, super warm parts of California or maybe a really warm part of, uh, of Arizona as an example and you guys may not have a dormancy process particularly southern Florida and I've gotten questions in the past about oh well if my tree is not dormant and it really never goes dormant in Florida or southern Florida should I prune it and the, que and the answer is yes um, you should prune it you know of course, there's different reasons to prune a tree, right? We're always gonna have an objective with this. We can get into this in just a moment. But even in South Florida, yeah, you're gonna have to find the right time for you to prune your tree. Preferably when it's the coldest week of the year, when it's really, things have really slowed down and the trees don't really look like they've been doing anything for some time. Even in, even in Southern Florida, it can get down to 40 degrees, not very often. But, um, you know, it's just something you're going to have to figure out for yourself, unfortunately, is that you really have to imagine what would be the best situation for your tree. And if, it, if you are pruning your tree in that kind of climate, I would say minimal pruning, you know. Um, you don't really want to be taking off too much wood. And that really goes for, e for everybody. We don't want to be pruning our trees too much. Figs do not like to be pruned um, really all that much. In fact, they only really like to be lightly pruned and they'll benefit from being lightly pruned in a lot of climates. A lot of you guys, however, have this issue where you have a space issue or your tree is going to get too big. Um, so in that situation, you got to do what you got to do, right? But the more we prune our trees, just as a general rule of thumb, the more wood that I take off of this tree, the less fruit I'm going to have next year. Um, the less productive it's going to be. And in fact, if I don't preserve these growth tips here, which is the growth point on every branch, there's a tip, a green tip, and that's where the leaves come out of. And if I can preserve those tips 
and they wake up the following year and those tips are preserved, I will get my main crop because the main crop forms a new growth. So if I can preserve those tips, I'm gonna have main crop two weeks earlier. On average, it's not always two weeks, but that's a good general rule of thumb. And the reason for that, for those of you who wanna know why, is that if we preserve these tips, the growth from this point when our trees wake up the following season is gonna be much more vigorous. Um, it's gonna reach maturity faster than let's say a branch down here. Like if this is you know, gonna leaf out in all different directions, it's gonna put out all different, different new branches, I may have a lateral branch from down lower that's just not gonna reach maturity nearly as quickly as the highest branch, the highest bud. Um, and in particular, from these growth points. Even if I were to just say, let's say I, I just took off the tip here. So I'll cut this off and I'll show it to you. This is just, this is just the tip right here. I don't know if you guys can really make that out. Now below this tip is buds. And just because I took that off, this tree on this particular branch is gonna fruit two weeks later. However, what I did do is I changed up the hormones in the tree. By taking off the tip, we talk about doing this when we're pinching as well. By removing that tip, we're changing up the hormone balance. The auxins in the tree are gonna change. There's no apical dominance anymore. At the highest point of any tree is the most apical dominance. dominance. And it has as much auxin as possible, which is then suppressing the lower growth because it has that dominance. It's just like, you know, it was like alpha male type things. It's the same thing here with plants is that they also have a form of dominance. So by removing that tip, you, the tree loses its dominance in this particular point here. And now the tree the following year has the ability to branch out in different directions. And by branching out in different directions, by changing up those hormones, you're actually encouraging the tree to be more productive, uh, to have the right hormonal balance. Um, you know, instead of having, let's say, if I left the tip on there and I let the tip grow, new growth that was, like I said, two weeks earlier, it'd be two weeks earlier. However, on this section of the tree, I would have less fruit. Right? There's a balance. You, know, you can have earlier fruit or you can have more fruit. It's really depending on what you want to do. So by taking off the tip, and the reason why we have more fruits this way is because now the tree has the ability, because there's no more dominance, to send out all these new vigorous shoots from lower down, lower down on this wood. Right? So there's a bud here. There's a couple buds up in here. There's a bud behind it that you guys maybe can't see. There's a bud right here. A bud, uh, at every leaf is a bud. And because I took off that tip, it's gonna have the ability and it's gonna be encouraged because of the hormones to then send out new shoots in these different locations. And then I can come in here in the spring. Once I've taken off the tips in the winter time when I do my pruning, I can come back in here in the spring and I can say, all right, well, I like this branch, I don't like this branch, I like this one, I don't like that one, and I can rub off what branches I don't want. And I can keep the ones I do because, like I said, the main crop forms on the new growth. So if we can really focus on having the best, most productive, most vigorous new growth that's growing in the directions we want, that's getting enough sunlight, we're gonna have the best tree possible. So it's really important from that, knowing that, that we can do that little technique. And we do that every spring. We talk about that every single spring. Um, you know, so going back to this, that's one option, right? It's taking off the tip. We can leave the tips. The third option here is to take off about three inches of growth. And this is still defined as light pruning. If we have too much pruning, a hard pruning, if I were to come in here, let's say, and I were to take this branch all the way down to let's say here that's a lot of growth that is enough growth that's more than three inches it's more than taking off the tip this is enough growth to consider this a hard pruning and a lot of people say all right well take off a third of your tree 
a third of the growth, take off a half of the growth. You know, I think most people would say that a hard pruning is maybe half of the growth from last year, um, half of the new growth. Um, in figs, it's very different. And if you take off more than three to four inches of growth, that is considered um, heavier pruning. You know, it, you're no longer in the light pruning stage. You're no longer in that. So it's important to consider for what your objectives are. And we're going to get into the objectives in just a moment. Um, so that's one option is to do a hard pruning. And that's legit. That's a good reason to do it. If we do a hard pruning, let's say, why would we want to do a hard pruning? Well, we could do a rejuvenation pruning where I can actually chop this tree all the way down to the base and have it re-sprout from a lower node that's usually more vigorous, more healthy. And that's called rejuvenation pruning for a reason. Usually it's used on 30 or 40 year old trees that lost their vigor, that you know really need better soil, and they've just been old and gnarly. And that's just a good technique to rejuvenate the tree. You could do the same thing even with your potted trees that maybe you have a potted tree. We've done a video on this by, by the way guys with our Planera actually. We talked about it only a couple weeks ago and the results I had with that. But you can do it with your potted trees and chop them all the way down to the base and have them re-sprout and really get a better um, base that way, a healthier base to grow from. You know this is where I grafted it right here. So if this part of the wood is not that healthy it's not putting out that vigorous of growth, it's gonna then affect all the new growth up here. Um, the following growth forever, really. And so this growth down here sort of fixes itself. So we're gonna get into a little bit more about that, but essentially that also means you really wanna take out the dead wood. You wanna take out wood that really doesn't look that great. And that's kind of really hard to explain. But you can see that this has really wide node spacing. This is a very vigorous variety. I would characterize this variety here called Chater Green as a very vigorous variety. It has node spacing here on average of somewhere around three inches. That's really vigorous. Um, so if you've got vigor like that, usually the wood's very healthy and the base of the tree is very healthy and you really don't have to worry about it. You know, but if you have some growth that really isn't doing a whole lot, the node spacing is very close together, and you have some damaged wood somewhere down below, I think it's a good idea to consider it. If your tree hasn't produced well for three years, um, you have two of the same variety, one does great, one doesn't do great, I think it's a great idea to consider it. And that's really what we talked about in that video two weeks ago. So if you want to hear more about that, I would suggest going back, but a lot of my thoughts this year, knowing all that about rejuvenation pruning, I'm really inspecting this growth and I'm really saying, all right, well, what, what part of this growth do I not like? You know, which of this do I, I want to keep because it looks really healthy and which of this really doesn't look that great? And I would say probably this growth up here, this growth all the way at the top is pretty small. It's not as vigorous because we had pinched this tried to get it to fruit it didn't fruit this year but then after pinching it it resumed growth and put out this weak growth up here so i don't really like this so what i'm going to do is come in here and i'm going to actually take this off and that's just growth that i don't i don't really like as an example you know that would be something for the rejuvenation aspects for keeping our tree very healthy and very vigorous i think that's pretty important so the fourth option here so we've got ourselves you can take off the tip you can take off three inches of growth. You can do a hard pruning, like a rejuvenation pruning. Um, or you can kind of do this in a way that you're setting yourself up for shaping it, shaping it the right way. And I've got a pretty good shape just looking at it right now. You know, you can see that this is looking pretty good. We got everything at the same height. And this is good to use on your younger trees, right? This is something that you want to do when you're not at maturity is that you really want to focus on getting this right shape to then build upon for later years to have as much production as possible so you know if we're building our trees and getting them off to a right the right base the right start everything's healthy everything's vigorous we just want to focus on the form we just want to have enough of this tree to then branch out to have a nice wide canopy uh, that's not shading itself out you know, it's really doing 
pretty much everything you want it to do in the future. And it all really starts with the form. So again, there's a lot of objectives with this. What is it that you want to do? Um, another objective is to really prune this thing for fruit production. So again, I could prune this. I would say for fruit production, I probably want to just take off the tips and that's it. If I take anything more off than the tips, even three to four inches of growth, I'm going to lose some fruit next year. Now, of course, I want to focus on having a really healthy, vigorous tree, right? So I want to cut out all that dead. I want to cut out all that wood that doesn't look that great. Um, so I know maybe another objective that you have is you want as early a fruits as possible. Leave on the tips. Try to get as many tips as you can, right? Get it to branch out in one year. And then the second year, preserve most of those tips. And you're going to have nice production. You're going to have earlier fruits. Um, the third objective here, maybe you just want a good form. And that's exactly what we're doing here is that we're coming in here. We're getting everything spaced out really nicely so that it's going to grow in its own direction. You know, this branch right here, it's going to branch out, let's say this way, or let's say this way, but I don't really want it to branch out this way because we've got ourselves a branch already right here and a branch already right here. So if anything, I want this thing to branch out this way. And if you look here at the nodes, you'll see this one here is going to branch out probably about right here, which is good. We have a node on the back, which will probably branch out again this way, but the node all the way at the top is gonna to branch all the way back towards me, towards this other branch system here. So I think it's a good idea to even come in here and cut, make sure cuts on an angle, guys. That's another good one. Um, you know, and also don't come in here too close to the node. I think you should really leave some space uh, Nothing crazy, you don't want to leave too much space, but essentially what we just did, again, is that we're now making sure that this bud is going to branch out in the direction we want, and this branch is going to branch out, or this new bud is going to branch out the following year in the direction that we want. So we're thinking about, already ahead of time, almost how we're going to thin this out, right? If we get new branches down here or something like that, they're not really going to do much for us. So we want to make sure that we're coming in here we're thinning all this stuff out. We're rubbing off those buds just after the tree woke up. But again, it's good to focus on this stuff now. It's really getting the direction of the buds that you want if you're not willing to come in here and thin this stuff out. Um, so let's see, what else do we got here? This branch is cut pretty well. I'm going to cut this just on an angle, a little bit lower. It's going to branch out more this way, and this one's going to branch out this way. And then we have on the back side here, nodes that I don't really like. I really don't like this entire branch right here. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut this whole thing out. And this is again for form. This is what we're doing right now for form. If I was doing this to get as much fruit as possible, I would have done nothing. I would have just took off the tips. If I was going for early fruits, I would have took off, uh, I would have took off nothing. I would have not even pruned off the tips. So now we got this branch here, which we haven't even looked at just yet. And the wood looks reasonably healthy. However, I don't like some of this stuff up here. And as a result, I think I'm going to take off this whole branch right here. I don't like the way this, this whole thing looks. I don't like what it's doing. And essentially, this will then branch out and, and have dominance here. The only thing I want to do now is take off the tip because I want this to branch out for form. I want this to branch out quite a bit. I want this to branch out quite a bit. And I want this to branch out quite a bit. And now I have realistically a really good form for a young tree. Everything's spaced out nicely. Again, we're going to have a nice dense canopy the following year. I'm just cutting off some growth back here that I don't really like the look of. And that's it. We got a really nice, healthy, vigorous variety that by year three or year four, you should be in that maturity stage. You should have that form down and then your objectives can change. You can then start thinking about, all right, well, I want to focus on, you know, getting myself uh, earlier fruits or more fruits. Um, also, I think it's worth noting, you know, let's say you got yourself a, a tree that's at maturity. Maybe you just want to start all over. You know, I know that's really sad and that, that may hurt a lot of you guys, but it, it's a necessity in some cases. Um, 
So that's kind of the basics here, guys. Uh, there's a lot more I'm gonna talk about in, in a future video when we do this for real. And I'll show you guys more examples of what it is that I'm doing. But really, I'm just coming in here and thinning this out for form, getting myself cuttings that um, I can either root or I could trade or I could sell them. But realistically, if you want to have some fruits, a lot of fruits next year, you want to leave your trees mostly alone. And um, what ends up happening, and this is why I recommend this, is that if you don't, if you prune your trees too hard, you do too much of a hard pruning, the tree's natural response is to grow too vigorously. And it puts out too vigorous of growth that doesn't fruit because it grows too fast. Um, and you have to change up the hormones in the plant. You have to literally intervene yourself the following season. Um, so this, ups this upcoming spring, this variety probably won't fruit. This is a variety that is very vigorous. And I just did a really hard pruning. So the combination of the vigor of the variety plus the combination of how I pruned it, it's not going to fruit. So the only thing I can do at this point, really, is to try to get this thing to slow down. Is probably feed it a little bit less, water it a little bit less, but also change up the hormones, right? I can make this bleed a little bit the following season. I can come in here with a knife, make some small incisions down the bottom and get that thing to bleed a little bit, some type of girdling. Um, you know, this is just something that I think a lot of you guys need to consider. Um, because if you're just coming in here blindly and chopping some stuff off, yeah, it, 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 you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have success, but you're not gonna have nearly as much. And um, it really does depend on the genetics too. I can't say that everything I just said really applies to every variety, you know. Um, there's certainly some varieties that I could prune very hard um, and they'll fruit for me. Even here in my crappy, cool climate, um, short season climate, I will actually get fruit off of this. Uh, but this particular variety, there's no chance. It's just too vigorous. It doesn't fruit early enough. Um, so what you're really, ex I'm pretty much expecting nothing from this tree. In fact, this is a variety that I'm getting rid of. So. Um, I won't even have this variety at all, but again, for demonstration purposes, I hope you guys got something out of this. And um, yeah, that's kind of it, guys. I, I hope this uh, holds you over until December because that's not re that's really when I'm going to be doing my pruning. Is about December first, Thanksgiving, and then everything's going to go away for good in the winter time. And even here in this climate, that's the best time to prune. Um, so yeah. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, guys, all right? Uh, if you enjoyed this one, check out our blog, figboss.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, that's a nice form, I have to say. All right, everyone, take care.